Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate here on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, this month's theme being swine technology. On today's call, we are joined by Matthew Ruda, co-founder and CEO of Swine Tech. Swine Tech provides one scalable, intuitive, and centralized platform that increases farm profitability by improving daily workflows, process compliance, and pig care. It empowers workers to improve the health and well-being of pigs while supporting more efficient, more sustainable facility operations. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We invite you to this because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Swine Tech's market. You're potential customers for Swine Tech's products and services. You've built a company similar to Swine Tech, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities Swine Tech may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And while that poll is running, we are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help Swine Tech find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we'll answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Matthew Ruda, co-founder and CEO of Swine Tech. Matthew, please feel free to take it away. Hey, thank you for the great introduction and your, your, your invitation today. And I appreciate everybody who is listening or who may listen for the time that you're taking as well. Swine Tech is bringing greater transparency and profitability to the pork supply chain by transforming the daily management of pig farming operations. And today, we're managing the quality of care for more than 2 million pigs across North America. To best understand where we are going, you need to know where we've been. Swine Tech was initially founded to help prevent the deaths of over 160 million pigs from getting laid on and crushed by their moms. This was ultimately accomplished by developing a technology that used voice recognition to listen to the waveforms and frequencies of each and every one of the piglet squeals. That allowed us to accurately identify and triangulate when and where a mother was laying on a newborn piglet. And then we used a lightweight wearable to alert the mother to sit up and successfully save that pig's life. SmartGuard was proven in many studies to be effective at saving pigs' lives, but the ROI was dependent on downstream processes and actions taken by the farm. Through the commercialization of the technology, we identified a gap in the industry that was preventing other precision technologies like SmartGuard from achieving a consistent ROI. That gap is the hyper-focus on automation and the lack of focus on process and people management because producers have hoped that technology could replace people, but that isn't the case in the sow farm. A technology that identifies a sick animal, for example, has successfully accomplished its goal but the end ROI is completely dependent on a person to respond to that alert, treat that animal, and provide the necessary follow-up care. If there is variation in this response, there is inevitably variation in the results. And since there is no clear way in our industry to drive and measure those behaviors, there is a lack in confidence from a producer that their operations will be able to adopt it across their operations and achieve the desired ROI. This is an example that really represents the problem. Our experiences and collaborations with our producer partners have helped us identify one of the best opportunities in the swine industry today. And I'm excited to share that opportunity with all of you. Last year, more than 550 million piglets died due to a lack of timely care. And this has led to the waste of nearly 120 billion pounds of pork. These losses are costing the global supply chain nearly a half a trillion dollars each year. Since the 1990s, each sow now produces twice as many pigs. The employee to sow ratio in some cases has grown 10x, and our availability of quality labor is quickly shrinking. Despite these issues, farm labor still operates the same way it has back then in the 80s, with pen and paper, whiteboards, and no internet. As a result, we are understaffed, and our industry is in, a dark, in the dark. Nearly all aspects of what is done who did it, and how well it was performed on a daily basis are unknown, and that has led to a lack of consistency and predictability. This is creating challenges for every member involved in the pork supply chain, 
And as an industry, we are wasting our genetic potential. And worst of all, we are letting our people down as we are not providing them with the resources necessary to help them collaborate and succeed in their roles. I'm Matthew Rota, the co-founder and CEO of Spine Tech, and I've loved working with pigs ever since I was a little kid. In my, in my experience managing daily operations on a large farm in Iowa, I was able to experience the many pain points that producers face on a daily basis. There's a lot that takes place on a cell farm, and I will never forget how frustrating it was to have to rely on pen and paper and whiteboards to manage a team of employees and provide timely care to thousands of pigs. I knew there had to be a better way. So we went out and we interviewed 200 pork producers from all over the world and found that just about every producer lacked clarity into what was taking place on the farm and how it was impacting their operations. We found that 93% were looking for a change. And so we asked these producers what they wanted to see in a solution and delivered on exactly what they asked for. PigFlow is an intelligent workforce and herd management platform that helps pork producers maximize the potential of their operations. PigFlow assists teams to better plan, execute, and succeed together and helps teams succeed by autonomously generating and organizing daily tasks for employees, streamlining communication, as well as alerting employees when there is an issue, such as a sour piglet that is in need of timely care. This is made possible by using time-proven management strategies that allow managers to create and customize goals and expectations around daily events. PigFlow helps monitor the flow of the farm and prompts employees when a task or issue needs to be addressed. And this ensures that all employees are aware of what matters most at any given time, allowing them to be efficient and provide timely care. Managers can view customizable reports on her data, the compliance of employee behaviors and actions, and the outcomes that resulted from their behaviors. This empowers managers to be fully aware of how well their people and farm are doing at all times, leading to more timely and informed decisions on what needs to be improved. PigFlow also allows for the automatic data capture and tracking of the individual animal from birth to harvest via RFID tags. This gives producers greater visibility into each animal's data, providing the information necessary to make timely decisions and accelerate genetic progress. This allows PigFlow to also prompt managers and employees with predicted probabilities of success that are tied to each animal's care. PigFlow is effectively ending the herd mentality by providing the clarity and measurement of the individual animals whose results truly define the herd, because we believe that only by focusing on the individuals can we maximize the herd's results. In addition to the management of the herd and employees, PigFlow allows for the seamless implementation and management of precision technologies like SmartGuard. This promotes better care for the herd and allows technology companies and producers to collaborate in the measurement and the receipt of reports on how compliant teams are with the utilization and management of technologies within the farm. The benefits of pig flow are numerous because teams are now clearly on the same page and have access to the necessary resources to provide the very best care. Pig flow users have experienced a significant reduction in piglet deaths and stillborns, as well as a noticeable improvement in efficiencies that have reduced the need for labor. Additional benefits have been improvement in communication, more confident teams, greater process compliance, less stress, and a greater employee retention rate. We have developed an enterprise SaaS business model for the commercialization of PigFlow. This allows producers to choose from one of our three plans to aid in the management of their operations. In addition to these revenue streams, PigFlow will receive revenues from the implementation of network infrastructure, the management reporting for third-party technology providers, the sales of our very own technology smart guard, as well as for the data that will empower meat processors, nutritionists, geneticists, and the pharmaceutical companies in our industry to learn and improve on their existing offerings. Today, PigFlow is managing thousands of sows, has partnered with reputable state universities, and was awarded best product of the year at the World Pork Expo. Today, PigFlow is managing sows and pigs for some of the largest producers in the world, and these producers are accounting for 19.4% of the pork produced within the U.S., which offers a scalable opportunity for swine tech. Now, some of these producers are not, are not shown here, but with these producers, we have collaborated with their leadership teams to figure out how we can expand pig flow through their entire operations. This collaborative relationship with producers has also helped us identify the most strategic path forward for pig flow. The ability to start in the sow farm provides a strategic advantage when expanding into other areas of pork production. This is because the sow farm is where it all starts, and that allows us to be upstream of all of our competitors that have been focused on the grow finish space. There are a variety of approaches to improving various aspects of management and swine operations, but PigFlow is the only solution 
that focuses on the people that make it all possible. Our philosophy that states that people are a part of the solution as opposed to the problem is what makes us different. And it is what has helped us realize success in such a short period of time. The market for the swine industry is large as it is the most consumed animal protein in the world. In the US, approximately 1,000 producers make up 80% of the pork production and over 65% is made up of only 45 producers. The annual total addressable market for pig flow is approximately 3.7 billion and 408 million in the US. It is expected that the addressable market will only grow as the industry identifies more ways to utilize the platform's capabilities and as the population continues to grow. Our sales method has been typically a consult joint approach, and we often meet face-to-face -face with these producers at industry events. Sales in the swine industry are heavily driven through word of mouth as many of these producers, although competitors, help one another and seek to share their knowledge of what works well. That is why we created the Popular Pig Podcast. Popular Pig is part of a content marketing strategy that allows Swine Tech and our CEO to be seen as an industry thought leader. It also allows us to connect with some of the most respected and brilliant minds in the swine industry. We project to manage 75,000 sows by the end of 2021 and a total of 225,000 sows by the end of 2022. That success along with the word of mouth that follows will allow us to scale throughout the US and Canada and it will help us attract key partners that will serve as global distributors. All of our success to date has been made possible thanks to an amazing, resilient team. Our team is experienced in pork production, software and hardware engineering, agricultural sales and marketing, international business development, as well as mergers and acquisitions. And our engineering team, led by Ben White, has managed billion dollar contracts for some of the most notable brands in the world. We are also advised by Dr. Tom Stein, the founder of the world's first swine management program, and Ron Ketchum, an industry leader in evaluating and consulting swine data, as well as Randy Stacker, a man globally regarded as the godfather of the modern pork industry. At Swine Tech, innovation is what we do, but it does not stop with pigs. The pig flow platform and all of its capabilities can be expanded to serve different forms of animal agriculture. The sow farm modules can be used in dairy operations, and the grow finish modules can meet the needs of producers raising beef cattle, poultry, and fish. We believe that the only way we can predict the future is by building it. And we ask you to join us in transforming the way we raise animal protein by offering innovative solutions that create a more predictable, sustainable, and transparent food supply chain. Thank you all. Awesome, Matt. Well, thank you so much for the fantastic presentation and the overview of the exciting work that the Swine Tech is doing. For anybody in our audience today who is curious to learn more about Swine Tech, now is a great time to ask a question. The best way to ask a question is by typing it in the Q&A box, and I can answer um, all questions in the order that they're received. But you know, Matt, one thing I wanted to kick off with while we're waiting for questions from the audience, I'm always, I'm always amazed at the TAM for, for livestock management, whether it's, whether it's cattle, pork, et cetera. And I think, I think to the average, you know, listener who's not attuned to this industry, it's hard to fathom like how many animals are out there being managed in such a wide variety of markets. Can you help put in perspective just where the biggest markets are for this technology and where a lot of the pork production happens today? So a lot of the things that would dictate what the biggest large or biggest market would be for us have to do with some of the problems that that industry might be facing. Labor shortages have been driving an incredible amount of, of challenges for producers. And if by managing that herd and that workforce in a more effective way, if you can help them navigate that change and that challenge in a way where they can be more profitable, that, that's where we got to focus. And so when it comes to dairy operations, there's, there's a lot of opportunities there with labor because there's so much going on. And in regards to grow finish, uh, which also is very similar, you know, with some of the things that go on in poultry and, and on the fish side, it's it's a whole different different problem. And, and that's why the modules we've built to help drive effective management of people and pigs can split into these different markets because the, sw the swine industry does have two sides of it when it comes to the sow farm and grow finish. But that, that market is also tied to what else can come from this? I mean, when, we, when I brought up my total addressable market, it's what could I do today? 
but it is not accounting for all of the revenue streams that can come from tomorrow when you can have predictive analytics on the herd, when you right. can have full traceability and get the packer involved. So a lot of it just has to do with what is the openness of the industry and of the packers and the consumers to, to get more involved and, and help, help bring value to that space. No, that's really, really interesting. One, one thing, you know, swine tech has obviously evolved a lot over the years and, you know, originally I remember there being a really strong focus on reducing crushing that occurs with baby pigs and how, how has the product and the technology platform evolved? Because as you started to allude there, there's a lot of opportunity from going from solving a point solution to solving some of these labor challenges and solving supply chain challenges. Can you talk a little about sort of where you guys started, where you've built on from there and sort of what you see the future of the product looking like? Yeah, for sure. I think we found ourselves in a very interesting situation because there is not a lot of innovation that happens in the swine industry and the innovation that had succeeded prior to us coming around was the kind of the plug in plug and forget controllers and, and other, other tools in the industry. If we had not built a working product that we had 100% confidence in, we never would have been able to identify this hole because we'd have continually been chasing our product or ourselves to try to figure out how we can be better at solving this problem. But the reality of the situation was we had so much validation and proof to the technology's effectiveness that we found ourselves in a weird situation collaborating with a lot of producers on figuring out how do you scale something like this? And then as technology started to catch up with us or other technology companies that were doing health tracking of animals or computer vision, in 2019 and 2020, it became more obvious that this was not just a challenge that we were facing. This was a challenge that every precision technology that is involved with the person driving that end ROI is going to have or is having today. And so in the collaboration with the producers we really said, all right, we were a product company, but how can we be a platform company for innovation to bridge the gap between the old and the new and allow the industry to achieve the modernization it's looking for? And really when we unturned all the stones and we met with really every single one of the top 40 producers, everything pointed us towards, we've been neglecting our people and our processes. And until we step back and catch up the areas that we haven't advanced well in this industry, we're going to be behind or we're not going to be able to move forward, right? It's been the limit of our, of our improvement because we focus so heavily on genetics and other areas of operations, which are great, but we can't utilize or take advantage of the potential because there's other resources that we have available to us that, that, that just can't do it. So that's kind of what brought us to this point. And it's, it's been a very exciting, exciting process. Yeah, definitely. One, one point you, you mentioned earlier, you talked a little about labor and, you know, labor is something that we've heard a lot about, well, a lot before the pandemic, especially in specialty crop agriculture, just a huge challenge in, in finding enough labor today. And then certainly exacerbated by the pandemic and a lot of talks in sort of the meat industry about the lack of availability of labor has your pitch and, and messaging to customers changed as that be, has become a bigger part of the challenge in agriculture as a whole and just finding enough people to actually do the work? So in sow farms, labor is definitely a challenge, but it's been a challenge for a while. So I don't think that that message has ne necessarily changed, but there was definitely a realization that you can't just innovate around people. You can't just displace people with automation because a lot of what people are there for is quality of care. My background in, in nursing homes and hospitals while I was studying at the University of Iowa gave me the experiences to understand that when we walk into a South Farm as an employee, we're really, we're really mimicking that job. Our responsibility is the quality of care to that animal. We're not in a manufacturing plant. We actually assimilate more closely to healthcare. And we do not treat those jobs in that way. And so when we pivoted our approach to the way we looked at labor, we really understood that, you know, just because we can automate something, we're still always going to be relying on somebody to respond. And if there is no consistency or understanding around what's happening when they respond, then we are going to be asking ourselves the exact same question for years to come. And that is, are my people making the most of this product? Is this product working? And it's just going to be a guessing game. And we're going to 
continue to do that. And, and the real, the real thing that popped from that when we met with producers was they said, you know, that is a big problem, but we face that problem yes. throughout the rest of our operations. It's not just technology. It's day-to-day processes, the day-to-day management of our processes. We don't know who did it or when they did it or how they did it. And therefore, when we set a goal and we evaluate the, the success or failure, there's not a whole lot for us to go off of. And so bringing this transparency into the operations really does build a foundation for growth of our, of, of our workforce to really make the most of our genetic potential that we've built as an industry. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations again on all the progress to date. I'd also like to thank our audience for your participation. We host Agri-Food Conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. If you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. A replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours and new viewers can register for Agri-Food Conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. If you'd like to learn more, uh, join us next week. We'll be joined by Stone X, the health by their camera predictive analytics product that simplifies the complexities of an operation for hog producers to understand their risk. Thanks everyone for your time. Matthew, thank you again for the great presentation. And we look forward to seeing you next week.